Broncos taking on the New Orleans Saints. We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New Orleans Saints and the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. And losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home. And they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd. And Second down, it's Taylor, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Broncos. Locke working out of the gun. He'll drop this down to Taylor. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. At the 44, shotgun snap to Locke. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like he'll spot it right in midfield at the 50. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. 50 yard line. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. He's across midfield. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. He lost four there, and it's third down. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. And then we got to give a little tip of the cap for the defense there. Zone coverage, locked it in tight, made it really difficult because they tried the crossing route against it, and it worked for a completion, but you have to know where the sticks are on third down. Didn't get beyond them, no pickup. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Back deep, Deontay Harris. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here come the Saints for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. We're not even a quarter way into the season. He's already off to a pretty nice start. NFC Offensive Player of the Week in last week's game. Yeah, week two, he was electric. Let's see what week three has in store. They'll come out throwing here on first down. This is complete to Michael Thomas. Pretty darn good, as you see right there on your screen. I'll echo that. Darn good. Two touchdowns, right? And the ability to be in sync with each other, right? To understand that he's going to be where the quarterback expects him to be when the ball's thrown. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Number 88. A three-yard gain on the play. Brings up third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Young. The pass 
complete to number 88. A gain of 11 on the play. First down, New Orleans. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll look to throw again. That's caught by the tight end, Harrison Bryant. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Harrison Bryant, eight yards on the pickup, brings up second and two at the 47-yard line. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Number 27. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. With the 48-yard line, a gain of five. They run the option here on first and ten. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A well-executed 22-yard gain. That's a nice, explosive play there, and this defense told us we have to have our eyes right on their RPO sets, and they did not have their eyes right. I love that term, eyes right, meaning they have to be in the proper place and read your keys. And a smart-thinking guy running an offense can see when you break down on that, and he took full advantage of it. to throw now on first down. Looking for the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Able to find Harris complete. And the Saints are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Big completion there on third and short keeps their opening drive alive. Not only alive, but plenty of possibilities now. First and goal, and you know me, I'm a big advocate. If you're going to throw the ball, throw it early in the down and distance count. First and goal from just inside the five. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. So often you hear that pep talks don't really work in the heat of the battle. But collectively, this defense has to say to each other, we've been on our heels this whole first drive. This is where we need to dig in. And they got a nice stop right there for a loss on first and goal. Second and goal from the six this time. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. It's the fullback. His second touchdown on the season. And the Saints have taken the early lead. Well, it was second and goal. You're in there close. That's the fullback's comfort zone. Not only is it his comfort zone, it's an expectation. That's what he's supposed to do. Turn and hand it to him. Matthew Big guys fire out. Find your way into the end zone. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Matt following the touchdown, McCrane set to kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. 22-yard line. 
So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll let this go deep for Sutton. And this is what here? Incomplete, they say. Looked like it was intercepted, but he apparently did not get the two feet down in bounds. Now a dump off here complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. They certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. First and 10, Taylor now. And three yards there, takes him to the 45. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the gun, it's Locke. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Locke's pass. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, lock into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 49. There he goes left side. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. A big play there by the rookie. An interception followed by the return for six points. If you want to be accepted by your teammates and coaching staff, make plays like that. Here's McCray now to add the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Matthew. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. First and 10 at their own 26-yard line. And Drew Locke once again leads the Broncos out. And now, Charles, this becomes a pretty important second drive for them. They're already down a pair of scores here in the first quarter. As you noted, they're down two scores. And to me, they're down a possession or a service break if this were tennis, right? Because they just gave one up. Only their second drive now run their offense, try and get back into the game that way, and then look for some help from their defense. Trying to forget about that pick six last time out. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Brings up second and four. Here's Locke. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. For the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Operating from the gun, Locke. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Roughing the passer, defense. 
So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Now a handoff here to his running back. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. On second and nine, lock. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. For Sutton, the receiving numbers from last week's game. Four catches, 64 yards. And most teams mark down big plays as ones that gain 10 yards or more. He certainly has big playability, and we just saw it on display. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result, because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right, they're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Back to Taylor on first down. Jonathan Taylor. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. At the 16-yard line, a gain of four. It's now second and six. They give to Taylor out of the gun, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Sometimes I think cornerbacks can benefit from the fact that quarterbacks might just forget about the idea that they might be near the line of scrimmage. How about the anticipation there sneaking in and making a big play in the backfield? Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. From the gun, lock, and he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Cortland Sutton, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos have cut it to within a score. And that one makes it 14-7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this carries into the end zone. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. At their own New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. The and from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. At the 29-yard line. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He completes it to Bryant. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It'll be a Saints first down on a gain of 16 yards. New Orleans. And he'll give it here to his running back. 
And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sets his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. Behind the chain, second and 12. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Throw left side, gonna be taken in by Harris. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. That catch good for five, it's third down. On the play, and it's third down. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. The Saints on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and eight. They'll set up a throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The pass. 12 yards there, good for a Saints first down. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. And a quick throw here, that's complete. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Behind the line of scrimmage. They'll try and run with their fullback. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. The Saints on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. This is third and four. Third down. They'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 24-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. the Saints, first down. first down that's caught it's Thomas and they'll get this down to the 10 back to back nice gains that one for 14 yards and another first that catch by the way number 940 in his career so he's 60 away from a grand but 940 that ties him with Art Monk and I think it's fitting that he tied Art Monk because of the way that he goes about his business the way that he plays the game not a lot of flash not a lot of dash but plenty of production on first down, Timmons. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. One yard gain brings up second and nine. They'll set up to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. It's third down. Third and long. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. To number 88. A gain of six yards on the play. Brings up fourth down. Here's Matthew McCrane now for the field goal try. A 29-yard attempt. McCrane's kick is good. And they 
They will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. Saints 17, Broncos 7. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on them. I was. Partner. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Cameron Jordan, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Brings up third down. So third and long now for Locke and the Broncos following the sack. Operating from the gun, Lock, and he's gonna go down again. Drew Lock, sack. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there, and that's exactly what happened on that play. Here's Matt Hawk now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So here are the Saints to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Young. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. First down, Saints. Over the middle, complete. That's Harris. Seven yards, the pick up there. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three at the Broncos 39 yard line. Now this one complete on the slant route. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25 yard line. Back to back receptions for him and it's another first down. A gain of 15 and a Saints first down. to throw again. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's a gain of eight. And now a carry here for their fullback. At the and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. The ball carried by the From down at the 12, it's first and 10. At the 12-yard line. It's a gain of six. First down. And again this time to the tailback. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Gain of six yards. And it's third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. 
And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Harrison Bryant, his second touchdown on the season. And the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Following the touchdown, McCrane set to kick it away. This taken in about four yards deep, and he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Drew Locke once again leads the Broncos out. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle of the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. Well, guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. Because they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there. Making the defense think is going to be a pass. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They look to throw. It's locked. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Well, a gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. And that is incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Tackle by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. Brings up second and nine at the 14-yard line. Second and nine now. Throwing it a traffic there, and that's complete. The pass. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll bring up a third and one. And it's third down. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Ten yards, good for his Saints first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. They'll look to throw now on first down. He'll find Bryant, his tight end, it's complete. They'll contain him to just four, second down. To Harrison Bryant, a gain of four. It's now second and six. 
at the 35. The throw over the middle, taken in. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A 12 yards there and a first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They'll look to throw here. Looking left side and it's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 13-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside, make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Second down and three, ball on the seven. His pass caught at the four. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. It's the fullback. His second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Saints add on to their lead. They have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. McCrane on for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A 10-play drive that time, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Matthew McCrane. Following the touchdown, McCrane set to kick it away. This will make it into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incomplete. Completion. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Shotgun snap to lock. And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off at the 38. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. touchdown That pick six extending this lead even further. And boy, it's been a while since I've seen a team struggle this badly in the first half. I think all they want to do is get to the locker room, try and regroup, and come out to start the third quarter. But if things don't improve fast then, I think the backups get a lot of play in the second half. Here's McCray now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. 
And this carries into the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Denver's offense ready to go again. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Looking to throw again on second down. Lock to the right side to Eric Ebron. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Lock working out of the gun. And that one will fall incomplete. Thrown away. And Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. To throw once more on second and 10. Lock, short little throw to Ebron. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And that will be incomplete with the clock showing 18 seconds now to go. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a round. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks. And welcome in everybody to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Time for a look around the NFL here in week three of the new year. We'll get things started in our nation's capital, Atlanta in town to take on Washington. And they are seconds away from halftime, all tied in that one. From there, we head over to the West Coast. Check out the Niners at home at Levi Stadium. And you can see they trail the visiting Buffalo Bills in that ball game. Josh Allen, four touchdown passes. Lastly, we head to the Gulf Coast and check on the Bucks at home in Tampa. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Carolina Panthers. 27 to 10, the final score. Meanwhile, our game has been a boat race, very one-sided to this point. And for the call of the second half, let's get it back to our commentating team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set now to go for the third quarter. The Saints have the lead and set to receive the kick. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. At their own 28-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Well, they've gone to their fullback quite a bit. He'll get it again. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way.
Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now back to throw. Being chased out left. He'll try and run it. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Brings up second and one at the Broncos' 44-yard line. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The fullback. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Let's face it, you always want a team full of guys who can get your first downs and big plays of all styles, but you've got to have a big man. You can just turn and hand it to, and he can be dependable in picking up first downs. He's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Justin Simmons up from his safety spot to make the tackle. Four yards on the pickup. Going quickly here to Thomas. At the 34 yard and line. He'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. Complete to Michael Thomas. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. 54 months. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Brings up second and a yard at the 17-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now a handoff here to his running back. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. It's been a struggle for the guys on defense trying to figure out how to get off the field. And now after that run, they're confronted with at least four more plays. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Ross Blacklock. In there to get him. It's a loss of five. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. And it has been a good game for them. They haven't been pressured very much today. But on back-to-back -back sacks, maybe the defense is starting to figure something out. something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards it's third and very long now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw this is complete to Michael Thomas and he'll get it here to the 10 yard line 14 yards but they're still well shy of a first as that leads to fourth down but it brings up fourth down So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. A 27-yard attempt. McCrane able to knock this one through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, 
the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. And Drew Locke once again leads the Broncos out. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Here's Locke to throw. He completes this to Sutton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Locke now to throw. On the slant, completes to Sutton. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long. But a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Brings up second and two. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And good running, going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 30. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out that heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Now to the air. Lock. Ebron with it over the middle. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. There's a nice pickup right there, and after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. They'll run here with Taylor. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Throwing now is Locke. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. A loss on the play brings up third down and goal. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. From the gun, it's Locke, and it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A big play, but still not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. And that big gain may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Locke. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Eric 
Eric Ebron. His second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos cut into that lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. And the lead drops from 34 to 27. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Here's Carter now on the return. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. At their own 26-yard line. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2, alert for anything out there, watching for trouble on the road, and making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if you can drive the bus here again on this drive. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield, and there's another completion. They'll look to throw here on first down. Throw left side, going to be taken in by Harris. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just not been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good, soft in spots. And there's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Back to throw now on first down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's got this down to the 35. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. High-scoring game. These offenses continue to hum and move the football. And I don't know about you, partner, but I'm starting to get a little, little winded here because watching him go up and down the field here in Denver where the air... The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off at the 38. The 30. Past the 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. I think this is where you have to have the term situational football in your head because this game is pretty much in the palm of your hand. And the one thing you can't afford to do, turn the ball over. Now you've given the patient a little bit of a heartbeat, haven't you? And now they're feeling it and they're back in this game. Yeah, still a little bit of a lead, but that makes things more interesting. We're still just in the third quarter here. McManus now for the extra point. And the lead is down to 20. His kick is good. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Here's Carter now on the return. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. At their own 23-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Roughing the passer, defense. Get out of here, man. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. 
Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. I think the good offensive coordinators in the league now are looking at the fullback position and finding the right guys to hide in that spot and increase their passing game, as we just saw there. How about the run after catch? Racked him. Well, yeah, whether it's a true fullback, a tight end, you put in the fullback spot, you know they're going to be tough to bring down if you can get them the football.